The first season of The Amazing Race Canada was a reality game show based on the American series The Amazing Race. It featured nine teams of two with pre-existing relationships who raced around Canada for 250,000 Canadian dollars, two Chevrolet Corvette Sting Race and an unlimited air travel for a year with Air Canada. The show was produced by Insight Productions, in association with Bell Media and was broadcast on CTV. The show was hosted by Canadian Olympian John Montgomery. The series premiere aired on July 15, 2013 on CTV, with the season finale airing on September 16, 2013. Father and son Timothy Tim Haig, Essa and Timothy Tim Haig, Jr. were the winners of the season of The Amazing Race Canada. They were the first parent-child team to win in the Amazing Race franchise and at the time were the first team to win after overcoming two speed bumps. Production equals development and filming equals. The first season was filmed from May 3 to May 24, 2013. The winning team earned $250,000, a pair of Chevrolet Corvette Sting Rays, and Air Canada executive passes for unlimited international air travel for a year. The series' premier sponsorship partners included Air Canada, BlackBerry, Chevrolet, and Interac. During the airing of the episode for Leg 3, a message read by host John Montgomery recognized that the 2013 Alberta floods had occurred since the filming of the leg and prior to the series premiere. The message encouraged viewers to donate to flood relief and rebuilding efforts. The Leg 5 pit stop was originally scheduled to be on the grounds of the Saskatchewan Legislative Building, however unexpected warm weather brought more people out to enjoy the weather. The unforeseen circumstance forced producers to move the pit stop to nearby Pine Island. On May 8, 2013, Toronto City Council granted permission for Insight Productions to film a television episode for three participants rappelling over the West Tower roof onto the podium green roof of City Hall on May 24, 2013. Ultimately, this permit was a ruse to prevent fans from recording the event and posting it online. Equals casting equals, casting began on December 20, 2012, with an online site for submission of applications and audition videos. The contestants included Body Break hosts Hal Johnson and Joanne McLeod and actress Vanessa Morgan. Contestants Tim Haig, Sr. and Tim Haig, Jr., a father and son from Winnipeg, Manitoba. In February 2011, Tim Essa was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. Jody Mittick and Corey Mittick, brothers from Kitchener, Ontario. In 2006, Jody was deployed in Afghanistan as a sniper team leader. During that time, he stepped on a combination anti-personnel landmine and mortar shell which blew off his right foot, and shattered his left leg. He now has artificial legs. Vanessa Morgan and Selena Mzirayway, sisters from Ottawa, Ontario. Vanessa is an actress best known for playing the title character in the Disney Channel series My Babysitter's a Vampire. Jet Black and Dave Shrum, best friends from London, Ontario. Jet works as a police officer in London and Dave is a marketing executive. Holly Agostino and Brett Burstein, married doctors from Montreal, Quebec. Hal Johnson and Joanne McLeod, married fitness icons from Oakville, Ontario. The duo are known for their body break program with Particip Action. Chris and Idienz and Darren Trapp a dating couple who are white water rafters from Fairmont Hot Springs, British Columbia. Jamie Cumberland and Pierre Cadur, gay friends from Southern Alberta. Both are members of the Alberta Rockies Gay Rodeo Association, where they initially met. They have been together for almost 15 years. Trina Lay and Tenil Dorrington, twin sisters from Hamilton, Ontario. Trina is a police sergeant in Hamilton and Tenil works as a tax auditor. Results, the following teams participated in the race, with their relationships at the time of filming. Note that this table is not necessarily reflective of all content broadcast on television due to inclusion or exclusion of some data. A red team placement means the team was eliminated. A green indicates that the team won a fast forward. If placed next to a leg number, this indicates that the fast forward was available for that leg but not used. 
an underlined blue team's placement indicates that the team came in last on a non-elimination leg and had to perform a speed bump during the next leg of the race. An underlined leg number indicates that there was no mandatory rest period at the pit stop and all teams were ordered to continue racing. The first place team was still awarded a prize for that leg. A purple eye micron indicates that the team decided to use the first express pass on that leg. If next to a leg number, it indicates that the team with the first express pass was eliminated on that leg without ever having used it. A magenta E unregistered trademark indicates the team has previously been given the second express pass and used it on that leg. A brown ash florin or a cyano indicates that the team chose to use one of the two U-turns in a double U-turn. Ash or a indicates the team who received it. Ash or indicates that the team was U-turned, but they used the second U-turn on another team. Ash and around a leg number indicates that the double U-turn was available for that leg but not used. Episode title quotes. Episode titles are often taken from quotes made by the racers. Where in the world is Ogopago? A Euro producer named, say who Leng a Euro calligraphy expert from Draw It Detour, who does and who dance a Euro producer named, Grab a Nug a Euro Dave, Death by Lentils a Euro producer named, Check the Cannons. A Euro Jody, We Don't Have Time for the Bathroom a Euro Tim SR. Clutch and Release a Euro Vanessa, Amazing a Euro Jet and Dave. Vanessa and Selena, the family race off a Euro producer named. Prizes, the prize for each leg is awarded to the first place team for that leg. Trips are sponsored by Air Canada a Euro all round trips are only available to Air Canada destination cities. Leg 1 a Euro 2 express passes a Euro an item that can be used on the race to skip any one task of the team's choosing up and until the seventh leg of the race. The winning team keeps one for themselves and may give the second to another team before the end of the third leg of the race. Also two round trip plane tickets to Sydney, Australia. Leg 2 a Euro 2 round trip plane tickets to anywhere in Asia. Leg 3 a Euro 2 round trip plane tickets to anywhere in the United States. Leg 4 a Euro an all-inclusive trip to Cancun, Mexico. Leg 5 a Euro 2 round trip plane tickets to anywhere in Canada. Leg 6 a Euro 2 round trip plane tickets to anywhere in Europe. Leg 7 a Euro 2 round trip plane tickets to anywhere in the Caribbean. Leg 8 a Euro 2 round trip plane tickets to anywhere in South America. Leg 9 a Euro Air Canada Altitude Super Elite 100K status for a year and a VBM video chat on a brand new BlackBerry Z10. Leg 10 a Euro $500,000 in cash and prizes, a pair of Chevrolet Corvette Stingrays, and Air Canada 10 Executive First Class tickets for two. Race summary. Equals Leg 1 equals. Air date, July 15, 2013, Niagara Falls, Ontario. Canada, Niagara Falls, Mississauga to Kelowna, British Columbia, Kelowna, 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 Okanagan Valley, Okanagan Highland, West Bank, at the starting line of the inaugural season of the Amazing Race Canada at Oaks Garden Theme Park in Niagara Falls, Ontario. Host John Montgomery stood at the starting line told the teams were informed that the winner of the first leg would win the express pass when a team may skip it before at the end of leg seven with the other express pass card to be given to another team before at the end of leg 3. They were also told to open their clues and head themselves to Niagara Park's Butterfly Conservatory. Upon departing, they must choose one of marked Chevrolet Sparks to their next destination. At the Niagara Park's Butterfly Conservatory, teams had to search the conservatory for one of nine terrariums, each containing a variety of creatures. They had to reach into the terrarium to retrieve two clues containing departure ticket vouchers, one for each team member. The terrariums containing more dangerous creatures. The clue contains an Air Canada ticket voucher for their first destination, Kelowna, British Columbia. With the first flight lands first, while the second flight arrives 90 minutes behind the first. Upon arriving in Kelowna, they had to choose a marked Chevrolet car and head themselves to Stewart Park and find the Kelowna Bear. Once there, teams needed to find a model of the yellow Interact truck, where teams would find their next clue along with an Interact debit card that would serve as the team's source of money for the rest of the race. 
the crew directed teams to travel to Lakefront Water Sports Kiosk where they must first pick a number for the morning opening. The next day, teams received the clue from the kiosk, and was encountered with the first roadblock of the race, asking, who's not afraid of the deep? Where teams had to sign up to rent one of nine personal watercrafts along Lake Okanagan and using just a rudimentary map, make their way to a diving station. One team member then had to don diving gear, dive deep to the bottom of Lake Okanagan, and search for a statue of Ogopago where they would find their next clue. The clue received at the first roadblock teams instructed to head to Myra Bellevue Provincial Park and find an abandoned Bellevue trestle bridge for their next clue, discovered with the second roadblock, asking, who's ready to get trained? The team member did not participate where the first roadblock had to climb 40 feet ladder and walk across a narrow plank attached to a railway trestle 12 inches high above the canyon to jump and retrieve their clue, which was dangling off the edge of the plank. They then had to bungee jump off the plank to the ground to meet their partner before continuing. The clue instructed teams to head to Quills Gate Winery at West Bank for the first pit stop of the race. Equals leg 2 equals. Air date, July 22, 2013, Kelowna to Sea Island, Richmond, Sea Island, Richmond, Vancouver, 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 at the start of the leg. Teams were informed to travel to the province's largest city, Vancouver. Upon arrival at Vancouver International Airport, they had to pick up a clue inside at the Maple Leaf Lounge where sending them to Richmond Olympic Oval in Richmond and had to search with their next clue. At the Olympic Oval, teams encountered with the roadblock, asking, who is skating on thin ice? One team member had to dress in skating uniform and perform two laps of short track speed skating in under 1 minute and 30 seconds. If they managed to reach the clock to finish, they would receive their next clue from professional speed skater Michelle Pin. The clue sent them to Millennium Gate at the city's historic Chinatown, and their next clue. The clue was discovered with the detour, a choice between draw it or dance it. In draw it, teams traveled to Ten Ren's Tea and Ginseng Company where each team member would drink a cup of green tea. Printed on the bottom of each cup was a Chinese symbol representing one of the twelve animals of the Chinese zodiac. They would have to memorize these characters, then go to the Dr. Sun Yat-sen at a classical Chinese garden, and successfully reproduce them with a calligraphy brush and a rice paper, and give it to a Chinese woman. If the characters were wrongly reproduced, teams would start all over again with new Chinese symbols. Once the calligraphy was satisfied in both symbols, the woman would get their next clue. In Dance It, teams went to the Chinese Cultural Center, where they would receive a list of destinations written entirely in Mandarin Chinese. They would have to travel to these locations in Chinatown to find the four pieces of a Chinese lion costume. Then, they would translate the locations return to the Cultural Center where they would have to put on the outfit and successfully perform the traditional lion dance, they would receive their next clue. The clue teams instructed to head to DP World Container Terminal, where must climb to the top 250 feet of a shipping crane and use a pair of binoculars to search for flags marking the location of the pit stop, the green roof at Vancouver Convention Center. Equals leg 3 equals. Air date, July 29, 2013. Vancouver, Sea Island, Richmond to Calgary, Alberta, Calgary, Calgary, Drumheller, East Cooley or Midland Provincial Park, Drumheller, at the start of the leg, teams told to head to their next destination, Calgary, Alberta. Upon departing, they must travel through the Internet Cafe Inn and must book their flight to Calgary in Air Canada's website. Once there, Teams picked up a marked Chevrolet pickups and drive themselves to the statue of Outlaw in downtown Calgary where they searched with their next clue. The clue teams received and heading themselves to Rankman's cookhouse and picked up the roadblock clue, where they asking, who wants to get in line? One team member had to properly learn and perform a classic Canadian line dance. If they could impress the dance correctly to the judge, a professional line dancer would receive their next clue a euro if not they have to start all over again. The clue sent teams to drive themselves to the Hoodoos, a rock geological form in Drumheller, located outside of Calgary, and their next clue. The clue was soon discovered for the detour, 
a choice between lump-by-lump lump and bone-by-bone. Bone. In lump-by-lump, lump, teams travel to the Atlas Coal Mine National Historic Site and rode a locomotive called Linda to the wash house, where they dressed up in coal mining outfits. They then had to shovel coal into a two-tons mine cart so that it overflowed and touched all four edges of the cart. After properly hanging their team's dog tag on the cart, they would receive their next clue. If the cart wasn't ready for haulage, they would have to start over and keep shoveling coal. In Bone by Bone, teams traveled to the Royal Tyrrell Museum where they studied a mounted display of a dinosaur's skeleton. They then had to enter the specimen preparation laboratory and completely build a model of the same skeleton from their memory. When all of the dinosaur bones built properly, a paleontologist would get their next clue. The clues received after the detour instructed teams to travel to the pit stop at Horse Eve Canyon Outlook. Equals leg four equals. Air date, August 5, 2013, Calgary to Yellowknife, Northwest Territories, Yellowknife, 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 Yellowknife to Carcross, Yukon, Carcross, Carcross, Carcross. At the start of the leg, teams were headed next to Yellowknife, in the territorial capital of Northwest Territories. Upon arrival in Yellowknife, teams had to drive themselves to Bush Pilots Monument National Historic Site and search the grounds with their next clue, sending them to Government Dock, where they make themselves by foot on an ice to Yellowknife Bay floating bed and breakfast and look with their next clue. The clue where it told was for the roadblock, asking, who wants to do a whole lot of shaking? One team member had to do a polar bear dip a euro they had to strip down to a bathing suit and jump into a hole cut into the ice, retrieving their clue from the opposite side of the freezing water. After they completing the roadblock, teams returned to the Yellow Knife Airport where they had to sign up for one of three charter flights to their next destination, Carcross, Yukon, departing 20 minutes apart. Upon arriving in Carcross, Teams had to head to White Pass and Yukon Railway last spike and find the steam train the Duchess with their next clue, encountering the speed bump and the detour. For the speed bump, Tim Sr. and Tim Jr. had to recite the first four stanzas of the shooting of Dan McGrew to a Robert W. Service impersonator. If the four stanzas are not recited properly, they have to start the poem all over again until they get it right before they could continue with detour a choice between Yukon Supply Run or Klondike Gold Rush. Both detours must travel to Bennett Lake. In Yukon Supply Run, teams had to use the provided tools and materials to build a raft and would have to paddle themselves, as well as some supplies, out into the lake to retrieve their next clue. In Klondike Gold Rush, teams completed three games inspired by the task's namesake. First, they would have to use a two-person sword to cut off a slice of wood from a log. Next, both team members would have to toss a hatchet and have it stick to a wooden target. Finally, one team member would ride in a wheelbarrow and had to direct their blindfolded partner around a course while they collected all five gold nuggets in a gold pan. After each detour, teams must drive through their ATVs to the pit stop at Carcross Desert. Equals leg five equals. Air date, August 12, 2013, Whitehorse, Whitehorse to Regina, Saskatchewan, Regina, 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 at the start of the leg in Carcross, teams must drive themselves to SS Klondike National Historic Site in Whitehorse and search the decks with a hidden clue, instructing them to fly to Regina, Saskatchewan. In Regina International Airport, Teams had to find a Chevrolet tracks in the parking lot where they would find a race sponsor BlackBerry Z10 which they tapped with the parking attendant Z10 to reveal turn-by-turn -turn directions to their next location, Saskan Pulse Trading Company. At the Saskan Pulse Trading Company, teams dug through dry bulk trailer loads of lentils to find two stuffed moose dolls which led to their next clue, instructing them to our CMP Heritage Center, were encountering with the roadblock clue, asking, who is ready for bed. One team member must attend an RCMP boot camp. The team members must be dressed in cadet uniforms. They must first get a supply of clothes, then go to their room, where they will place their clothes in the closet and cabinets neat and tidy, then they must make their bed. If an inspector thinks it met RCMP standards, Assistant Commissioner Roger Brown will give their next clue. 
if not, the inspector will dump all the clothes onto the bed and the cadet would have to start again. There was a fast forward in this leg, however, Vanessa is seen holding a fast forward clue in her hand, and it was unaired but included driving a police car simulation. The roadblock clue instructed teams head to Regina City Hall where had to learn how to perform a Ukrainian dance to get their next clue, the detour, a choice of brawn or beauty. Both detours had to travel to Mosaic Stadium at Taylor Field. In Braun, teams will have a chance to become football players. They must perform a series of football drills, then they must catch a touchdown pass from coach Kari Jones, then kick the football for a winning field goal. If they shot in a right score, Kari would give their next clue. If they fail, they must run a lap around the field then start over again. In beauty, Teams will have a chance to be a cheerleader. To become a cheerleader, they first must perform a choreographed dance, cartwheels, then flips. After that, they will perform a cheerleader dance for Saskatchewan Rough Riders fans. If team mascot Gainer the Gopher thinks it's good, he will hand them their next clue. The detour clues instructed and follow the path to a luxury box between sections 26 and 27 for a double U turn board. Tim Essat and Tim Jr. had to choose U-turn Hal and Joanne, while Hal and Joanne had to choose Holly and Brett, and their next clue, instructing them to the Pine Island at Wiscana Center for the pit stop. Equals Leg 6 equals. Air date, August 19, 2013, Regina to St. Foy, Quebec, La Copyright Vis, La Copyright Vis to Quebec City, Quebec City, a Euro statue of Samuel de Champlain. Quebec City a Euro Notre Dame des Victoires or Parc de la Sacherie and 102 Rue du Petit Champlain, Quebec City, Quebec City, Quebec City. At the start of the leg, teams were told for their next destination, Quebec City, Quebec. Upon arriving in Quebec City, teams had to head to La Copyright Vis Fort's National Historic Site in La Copyright Vis where they had to search their next clue sending them to travel by ferry across St. Lawrence River and up the old Quebec funicular to Car saint frontenac where they find the statue of Samuel de Champlain at Dufferin Terrace to find their next clue. The clue had turned out to be for the detour, a choice between Sculpt It or Spot It. In Sculpt It, teams must travel to Place Royale at Notre Dame des Victoires and choose a nice sculpture of a star, a house, or a boat. Then chisel out a copy of the same design on another ice block to get their next clue. In Spot It, teams must find a replica painting in Parc de la Sacherie with missing items. They must find the original mural image at 102 Rue du Petit Champlain, and then place Quay copyright bar copyright qua French words in the correct order to receive their next clue. The detour clue instructed teams heading to Place de l'Université copyright du Quay copyright Beck and picked up the roadblock clue, asking, who's ready to battle up? One team member must take orders from customers, then a chef will demonstrate how to make a proper crapé, two savoury and two sweet crapés, with instructions are in French. Then they must create four crapés with the right ingredients and using the proper method to make crapés, then serve it to the customer. Once they served all four crapes, the chef will give them the next clue. The roadblock clue directing teams to the Plains of Abraham, where had to learn to play lacrosse. Each team member had to catch a pass from their partner and score a goal to receive their next clue, sending them to the pit stop at Avenue St. Denis on the Battlefields Park. Equals Leg 7 equals. Air date, August 26, 2013, St. Foy de Ecolute, Nunavut. Buffin region, Buffin region, Buffin region, Ecolute, Ecolute. At the start of the leg, teams were told to head next to the territory of Nunavut. Upon arrival on its territorial capital of Ecolute, teams had to open their clues where they had to decipher it written entirely in an octichet, leaving to figure out that their next destination is at Sylvia Grinnell Territorial Park. At the territorial park, Teams had to locate two throat singers by the Sylvia Grinnell River and listen to an Inuit throat singing performance to receive their next clue. The clue soon turned out with the Eskimo themed detour, a choice between Harpoon Hunter and Igloo Builder. In Harpoon Hunter, one team member must put on snowshoes and pull their teammate on a sled one kilometer across the tundra. 
they must then both throw a traditional harpoon and hit a target. Once they are both successful the other team member must pull the sled back to the starting point to receive their next clue. In Igloo Builder, teams must build an igloo using only the tools provided and pre-cut blocks of ice. Once the Inuit elder feels that the igloo can withstand an arctic night, he will hand over their next clue. The detour clue instructed teams to travel by snowmobile across Probisher Bay to the Hudson's Bay Company trading post. For the speed bump, Tim Sr. and Tim J.R. had to lead a dog sled team across Frobisher Bay to retrieve a food cache and deliver it back to the starting point before they could continue with a roadblock, where teams asking, who needs to fatten up? One team member had to consume an entire serving of McTuke a Euro 10 pieces a Euro to receive their next clue. The clue instructed teams had to walk one kilometer northwest from the Hudson Bay trading post to their pit stop, which is located up the panoramic outlook. Equals leg eight equals air date September second, twenty thirteen. Equalute to Halifax, Nova Scotia, Halifax, Mahone Bay, Mahone Bay, Lunenburg, 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 Lunenburg. At the start of the leg, teams were instructed to travel to Halifax, Nova Scotia. Upon arrival, they had to search a marked Chevrolet Sonics and must find a USB flash drive inside the car, which played on a message on the MyLink video system directing them to Pier 21. When Pier 21 opened, teams received a passport and had to find seven different stamps. Then ink the seven stamps on the passport to receive their next clue. The clue was instructed teams to St. James Anglican Church in Mahone Bay where they received their next clue, as soon it discovered for the roadblock, asking, who wants to find their long-lost twin? One team member must search the scarecrow pictured on their race sponsor BlackBerry Z10. Once they found the scarecrow, they must bring it to a gazebo where they must build a copy of it with the items provided there. Then when they are ready for inspection, they must take a photo with the Z10 then hand it to a scarecrow expert. If the expert is satisfied, they will receive their next clue. The clue teams instructed to travel to Lunenburg and had to travel to Fisheries Museum of the Atlantic for their detour clue, a choice between surf and turf. In surf, teams made their way to Lunenburg Harbor where they had to board a lobster fishing boat and pull six lobster traps from the sea. They had to catch and band the claws of one lobster from each, and then deliver them to the Grand Banker Seafood Bar and Grill Restaurant to receive their next clue. In turf, Teams must their way to Boscorn and were presented with samples of 12 different kinds of sausages, and they had to memorize their German names. They then had to run to Zwicker Wharf and identify the 12 sausages from another, and labeled set of samples, in order to receive their next clue. The clues sent teams to St. John's Anglican Church where they locate with the W-turn board. At the church, teams received a Canadian dime, which features the Blue NO sailing ship on one side. The teams had to recognize this and make their way to its successor, the Buenos to a Euro, which was in a Lunenburg dry dock at the time a Euro the pit stop of this leg, where John was waiting for them. However, John gave the teams clues and told to keep racing. Equals leg 9 equals. Air date, September 9, 2013, Lunenburg to North Sydney, Cape Breton Island, North Sydney to Porto Basques, Newfoundland and Labrador St. John's. St. John's, St. John's, St. John's, St. John's or Harborst Park and Holloway Street, St. John's, St. John's. After being told to keep racing, teams were automatically given their next clue, instructing them to travel to Porto Basques, Newfoundland and Labrador. They must catch a bus to Sydney and ferry to Porto Basques. Upon arrival, they disembarked at the ferry dock and run one of three waiting cars, each with drivers who took them overnight to the provincial capital of St. John's. The first would carry one team, which left 15 minutes ahead of the second. The second also carried one team, which left 15 minutes ahead of the third vehicle, which took the other two teams. Once in St. John's, teams headed to the rooms and had to find their next clue. However, this destination was completely unaired. Next. They had to travel to Terry Fox Memorial Site at Trans-Canada Highway Mile Zero at Port of St. John's where they searched with their next clue, 
instructing them to cure D.V.D. Brewing Company at Cure D.V.D. neighborhood where teams had to recite Terry Fox's inspirational quote at the monument. If correct, they would be granted entry into a traditional Newfoundland kitchen party, where they would have to kiss a cod and each drink a shot of Newfoundland's screech. The clue sent teams to head to the overlook of Sheer Heights where picked up the detour clue, a choice between tell a tale or wag a tail. In tell a tale, teams traveled to the Petty Harbor dock, where they listened to two local fishermen tell a story in Newfoundland slang. They then had to relay the story, word for word, to a group of listeners nearby to get their next clue. If they got a key word, they had to start over. In wag a tail, Teams made their way to Harborst Park and chose a Newfoundland dog. They would then load up a cart with four dozen eggs and twelve bottles of milk, and had to have the dog draw the cart up the extremely steep Holloway Street to deliver these goods, undamaged, to four households. If these eggs or milk bottles are going to break, they would go back and start over. The clue instructed teams to O'Euro Square Brian's music store where they had to pick up the roadblock clue, asking, who needs to get their act together. One team member could use whatever musical items are available to them in the music store to perform at George Street and sing with the crowds to earn 50 Canadian dollars. Whatever the cash they earned, a street performer would give their next clue. The clue instructed to travel to their pit stop location at the most easterly point in North America, leaving them to figure out that it was Cape Spear, not the nearby Fort Amherst. Equals leg 10 equals. Air date, September 16, 2013, St. John's to Mississauga, Ontario, Toronto, 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 Toronto Waterfront, Toronto. At the start of the leg, teams had to travel for their final destination city, Toronto, Ontario, where they must receive a free upgrade to business class on their flight to Toronto. Upon arrival, they had to search outside Pearson International Airport for a woman wearing a maple leaf baseball cap who would give them their next clue. The clue teams instructed to head to L Tower and got the clue for the first roadblock, asking, who wants to hang out? One team member had to wrap a face first down the side of the L Tower, a building that was under construction at that time, about 44 stories tall. When they reached the roof of another three-story building, they would reunite with their partner and get the next clue. After completing the first roadblock, each team was given a Cadbury Caramilk bar inside their clue envelope, leaving them to figure out that they were headed to the Cadbury Gladstone Chocolate Factory. At the Cadbury Chocolate Factory, teams must search through cartons of Cadbury Caramilk bars to find one of three golden chocolate bars. Once they found one, they will have to proceed to the president's office, where he will give the team a golden key to unlock a safe, where their next clue was located, sending them to Toronto Zoo and where they had to search the grounds for their next clue, which had been set up inside the panda exhibit. The clue where it received at Toronto Zoo, teams directed to Evergreen Brickworks and searched the exterior with their next clue, the second road block and asking, who's got the race all mapped out? The team member did not perform the rap face first roadblock had to match provincial and territorial flags with the floral emblems visited during the race onto a map board. If teams were sharp, they would have noticed the pit stop greeters on each leg wore the floral emblem of their province or territory. Once they got all the flags and emblems matched onto their map, they received their final clue, sending them to Olympic Island for the finish line. Ratings the season ranked as the number one new show in Canada, and the number one show in Canada for the year, with an average audience of 3.5 million viewers. Episode 4, Grab a Nug, aired on Civic Holiday Monday. Episode 8, Clutch and Release, aired on Labor Day. References External links, official website